In this lesson, we will cover the basics of setting up a player, controller, and game mode in Unreal Engine. This will enable us to freely move through the scene without the use of a keyboard, which is easier for some consumers to navigate throughout the 3D space if they don't have traditional video game training. Instead, we'll simply be using a double click or double touch for touch devices to move to a specific place in our scene. Then we'll be using swipe controls in order for the player to look around, which is much more intuitive than using the W, A, S, D keys on our keyboard. So the first thing I want to do is make sure I have a content browser. I'm just going to go to window and content browser. In my content browser now, I'm going to create a new folder called underscore interface and open that up and make another folder called zero underscore uh, player. Open that up. And I'm going to add three blueprint classes in here. The first blueprint class is going to be a character called zero underscore character. The second blueprint class is going to be a player controller called zero underscore controller. And the third one, a blueprint class of game mode base called zero underscore game mode. The reason why I put a zero in front is just so that I know every one that starts with the numeral zero is pertaining to my player character. I now need to add this to my world. So I can go to window and open up the world settings. Under game mode override, I'm going to select the zero game mode I just created. Default pawn class is my zero character. And my player controller class is zero underscore controller. So I've just added three blueprints and I've just added those three blueprints into my world. Now let's open up our character blueprint and go to the event graph. If you're not familiar with the event graph, this is essentially where we'll be writing all of our code. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these three default nodes. I'm going to right click and add our first input of left mouse button. I need to add a new variable called click count, making sure to change the variable type to integer. Let's drag that into our event graph and get. Another way to do that is if I hold control on my keyboard and drag that in, it'll do the same thing, but it's a little faster. Off the little pin from our click count, let's type in plus plus to get an incremental int. And off the result, Let's get an equals by typing in equal equal and setting the value of that to two. Now off the red return value pin, let's get a branch and let's connect that all up like so. Off the true branch, let's get a simple print string and change the in string to be double clicked. So what's happening here is every time I click the left mouse button, it's going to get the click count and add one to that until it equals to two. Once that condition is equal to two, it's gonna print some string that says double click. I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight all these and right click and create a comment from section. And that comment is just gonna say add one to click count until it equals to two. I will always recommend commenting your code just in case in the future you come back, you know exactly what's going on here. Off my left mouse button input, from the released pin, let's get a retriggerable delay, leave it at the default value and then let's set the click count. You can do that by holding command on your keyboard and dragging it in and leaving it to the default value of zero. Now go ahead and connect those two new nodes. So basically what's happening here is that it's gonna reset our click count back to zero after 0 0.2 seconds. So we can keep using our double click function. I'm gonna go ahead and comment this as well by highlighting it, right clicking and selecting create comment from selection. This comment is just going to be reset click count to zero. Nice. Just tidy that up. And I'm going to compile and save and play to test it. So you see here in my scene, when I click twice within 0.2 seconds, it's going to print some string that says double click. So now double click is working correctly, which is awesome. One thing you will also notice is that we're not actually moving to where we're double clicking. So we just need to add some more code to that. So back in my character event graph now, I'm just going to pan across to the end right next to our print string. And I'm going to right click here and get a player controller. On the return value, I'm going to get hit result under cursor by channel. From the hit result, I'm going to break hit result. I'm going to open the drop down here. And you'll see the location yellow pin. And of that, I'm going to get a simple move to location. I can connect that to my print string now. Tidy that up a little bit. And I can close this collapsible drop down here. 
we need to also plug a return value from our Git player controller to our simple move to location. And if I double click on this blue line here, you'll see we get an extra pin that we can move around to tidy up our line work a little bit so that we can trace it easier. Once again, let's highlight all of our code, right click, create comment, and our comment is just gonna be simple move to location. Just gonna tidy up a little bit here. Looks good. We can compile and save and play the test. So now when I double click, you'll see it still prints the string, but we're still not actually moving to where we've double clicked. And that's because we need to set up some walking bounds. So I'm gonna exit that, go back into our 3D scene. I'm gonna go up to this cube with a plus next to it and start typing nav mesh and grab me a nav mesh bounce volume and drag that into my scene. Press R to bring up your transform controls on this and drag out the red and green and blue pins until it fills up your entire scene. I'm gonna go ahead and press P on my keyboard and now you'll notice there's some green overlays on our floors. This basically means our nav mesh is covering the correct areas and everywhere that it's green means that we can move to that space when we double click on it. You'll notice the green space is a little bit broken up so we can't actually walk everywhere that we want to and this due to collisions on some of our static meshes. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the collisions off on this coffee table here. I can do that just by clicking on it. Going to the details panel on the right here, scrolling down to collision and setting the collision preset to no collision. And you'll see the green starts to fill in that area. I'm gonna do the same with these ornaments and the legs. I'm gonna highlight them all and set no collision to those. Let's do the same for the couch. Select these three pieces, turn the collision off. Do the same for this chair, no collision. Might as well do the same for this chair as well. No collision. You'll see the green area starts to fill a bit more now, but you'll notice there's still a gap, and I know that's due to my wall. I could go ahead and turn the collision off, but I don't actually want to do that because I still want to keep the collision on. So the other way to fix that is if I open the advanced drop down here, I can check and uncheck can ever affect navigation. So you notice when it's unchecked, it'll fill in that green space. And when it's checked, it'll break it up. So I wanna make sure that's unchecked. Let's also turn off the collision for these chairs here. So let's select all these, select the dining table, this chair here as well, and then just turn the collision to no collision. This chair is a little different because as you'll notice, it's a blueprint. So I can't actually edit the collision in the details panel. I'll need to open that blueprint up and get the three components of that and turn the collision off of those. Compile and save and close that now. And you'll see that the green area of the nav mesh has filled in. Looking around now, this looks all good. So as a reminder, everywhere that's green, I can double click on that and it'll move my character to that position. Let's play to test that theory Let's double click and yay, I'm moving. Probably notice a couple of things though. I'm moving way too fast and you can't actually see where my mouse cursor is now. So let's fix those two things. Back on my character blueprint, I right click and get an event to begin play. I right click again and type in character movement. Scroll all the way to the bottom and click that off the character movement. Set max walk speed. Connect it to my begin play and set the value to be 100. To the right here, I'm gonna right click and get player controller. Off the return value, I'm gonna get set show mouse cursor, connect that up and check the Boolean to be true. So it's gonna show my mouse cursor now. Highlight all this and comment once again. Comment's just gonna be event begin play and I can actually add individual comments to each node if I click on it. Click this little icon and start typing. This is just gonna be set max walk speed. Oops, gotta correct that. And this one is just gonna be um, Boolean to show mouse cursor. Compile, save, and play. So let's double click. And you'll notice we're moving way slower and I can still see my mouse cursor, which is awesome. I can see where I'm clicking now but I can't actually turn around or look up and down. So I need to fix that. 
back in my character event graph once again. I'm going to right click and type in input access look up. So I just need to right click and get the input access for tuning. Now I should be clear here. These are input values that the student of this project previously made in the previous courses. Yours are probably not named exactly the same, but there should be something similar. Off the top axis value, I'm going to drag off that and type in pitch to get the add controller pitch input. And for the bottom one, I'm going to type in your to get the add controller your input. Compile and save, and we can test it. So I can look left, right, up and down now, which is awesome. And I can still double click to move to the location. Now I actually want to invert my controls so that when I drag left, I want to actually turn right. And when I drag right, I want to turn left and the same for up and down. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's close this back in our character event graph. Firstly, let's comment these two access inputs, orientation controls, and let's just comment the code inside of that as well. This top one's going to be look up. And the bottom one is going to be look left, right. Let's compile and save. And if I go up to edit, project settings, scroll all the way down to input, open the access mapping the students created. And I'm looking for turn to the mouse X. I need to invert that. So it's a negative one now. And look up, I need to invert that. So now it is positive one. And close that. And when I play, my control should be inverted. And it looks like it's working correctly. One final optional thing I recommend doing is just smoothing out the look left and right. So I can do that by going into my character viewport. I'm gonna add a spring arm and attach to that spring arm. Let's get a camera. I'm gonna change the spring arm target arm length to zero and change the location height uh, to be 70. You see that's moved up there. If I scroll down, I want to check use pawn control rotation. Also check enable camera lag and enable camera movement lag. Let's leave these values to default for now. Let's compile and save and play. And if we drag right and left, you'll see it's a little smoother. Uh, not quite to my liking. So I'm going to change the camera and rotation lag speed to 15. Compile, save, play and test that, and notice it's a lot smoother. I can double click to move, and I can look around successfully. Awesome. All right, so we have three blueprint classes here. We have a character, controller, and a game mode. If we go to our world settings, you'll see we've assigned them here under game mode. We have a game mode override. We have a default pawn class for our character, and player control class is our controller that we just made. If I open up the character blueprint, you'll see I have a left mouse button input here, and then I have a click count variable, which is an integer. And so every time I left mouse button click, it's going to get our click count, add one to that. And when that click count equals to two, then it's going to simply move us to that location we've clicked twice in. I also have a retriggerable delay. And it's just going to reset my click count back to zero if I don't double click within 0 0.2 seconds. And have some orientation controls so we can look up and then we can turn around. And if I go edit, project settings, and go to input, I'll show you what those look like. So we have our turn here. Right here. And then we have our look up on our Y axis. And these are the inputs that the student made. And during event begin play, we're going to get our character movement and set our max walking speed. And then we're going to also show the show mouse cursor. And our simple move to location works because in our scene, we have what's called a nav mesh bounds volume. And that nav mesh bounds volume is characterized by this overlay. And this green overlay means that we can double click and we can move here. Now, if you look at the coffee table, you'll see that the green overlay allows us to walk through this coffee table. And that happens because, where are we? Um, I've simply turned off the collision. So we can double click on this coffee table and we can also walk through it. 
So for objects you want to be able to walk through, then I simply recommend turning off the collision for that. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you in the next episode.